Okay, I thought I'd record uh, sort of a review video. Uh, this is a question from a previous final exam, and I'm thinking over time I'll add a few of these at the end of the course. And this is my first one. Uh, so this one is the solution of the Navier-Stokes equation, which comes from, I think, the fall 2014 exam. Oh yes, right, final exam, fall 2014. The problem states, consider steady laminar flow of a viscous incompressible fluid between two very long parallel plates with spacing B. Here, here's the spacing B. Far from the channel entrance, the Z and Y components of the fluid velocity are zero. So you're told that V and W are zero. The upper wall here is fixed, it's stationary, but the flow is driven by the motion of the lower wall. So this is like Couette flow here. We have a lower wall here moving at velocity u and by a pressure gradient in the x direction, so dp dx here. So we have both motion of the lower wall and a pressure gradient. The effects of gravity can be neglected, starting from the full incompressible continuity and momentum equations derive an expression for the fluid velocity u of y here. And I've made a little sketch of what you might expect. Now I'll point out that this is a combination of uh, Couette flow, where you have a flow driven solely by motion of a wall, and Poise flow, which is flow driven by a pressure gradient. These are two solutions we did in lecture, so it's a matter of combining those things. couple of slides from chapter 4 just to refresh your memory. This is not part of the solution, but remember in uh, chapter 4 we derived the continuity equation. This is the compressible continuity equation, but this is an incompressible flow. You're told that the flow is incompressible, so the density is a constant, so we want to use this equation. Oh yeah, I want to remind you to put this on your uh, personal equation sheet. You'll need both of those equations potentially on the final exam. You also want to look at the momentum, of course, that's how you get the velocity profile. So I've, this is another slide from the chapter 4 presentation. This is the x, y, and z momentum equations. In this case, we have flow in the x direction, so we want to use the x momentum equation. Again, make sure you have these equations on your personal equation sheet. And so the x momentum equation, these are the acceleration terms, the pressure gradient term, the viscous term, and the gravity term. So that was just a little bit of a refresher. We'll go back to the problem here. Before we get to the math, it's good to have a look at the problem and think about it. Uh, a few things to note from the problem statement. You're told that there's no flow in the y or z directions. So let's just remember, in the x direction, by definition, we have the velocity component u. In the y direction, we have the velocity component v, and we're told that that's zero everywhere. And in the z direction, uh, we have the velocity component w, and you're told that that's zero everywhere. So basically, we just have a, a, a flow in the x direction. You're told in the problem statement that the pressure gradient is not zero, that we have a pressure gradient in the x direction, so we want to retain that term. But uh, there's no gravity, so the, there's no gravity driving the flow in the x direction. So the x component of gravity is going to be zero. And I want to point out the boundary conditions here that are implicit in the problem, that the fluid sticks at the upper surface here, so the fluid has no velocity because that uh, fluid is, that, that uh, plate is fixed, so at, at y equals b, u equals zero because of the no-slip condition. Similarly, at the lower plate, at y equals zero, uh, u is equal to the velocity of the plate, which we're given as this uppercase u. So here we go, starting from the continuity equation. Now I've done this a few other times. There's uh, two or three solutions in the in the videos about this, so I'm going to go fairly fast. This is the uh, incompressible form of the continuity equation. You're told that 
v is zero everywhere and w is zero everywhere so their gradients are going to be zero right these terms there's going to be no gradient in w or v so you get that di u di x is zero and what that's telling you is that this velocity profile here u u is not changing in the x direction so if you drew it in any x location you get the same profile and this is called fully developed flow this happens when you're far away from the entrance uh, of the plates or entrance of a pipe so we have the di u di x is zero so now we can move on to the consider the x momentum this is the x navier stokes equation there's a number of simplifications we can make and i'm going to go through these again relatively quickly because we discussed these in several previous videos so you should be somewhat familiar with them okay so here are the simplifications i'll go through them one by one the flow is you're told in the problem the flow is steady so there's no change in u in time so that term goes to zero we just showed that the flow was fully developed so this term goes to zero du dx you're told in the problem statement that v and w are zero so th uh, these other two acceleration terms go to zero so you notice all the acceleration terms go to zero and that'll generally be the case because otherwise it becomes a nonlinear equation and it's hard to solve uh, you retain the pressure gradient in the x direction but i'll point out that since we don't have any flow in the y or z direction there's no pressure gradient in that direction in those directions and so you can replace that with a full derivative pressure is only a function of x we showed that the flow was fully developed that du dx is zero and so if the velocity profile is the same at any x uh, the second derivative is also going to be zero so you can set that to zero because it's fully developed I'll come back to this term in a minute it's not zero I'll come back uh, the u component of velocity is the same at, in all x locations and it's not changing in the z direction so we can certainly the second derivative is going to be zero u is not changing into the into the page and you're told in the problem statement to neglect gravity so this term goes to zero so let's talk about this term this term is not zero di squared u by di y squared so have a look at the velocity profile that I've drawn up here and you you can think about it this way that uh, du dy would be the rate of change of u in the y direction in other words the slope of this profile and di squared u by di y squared is the rate of change of u and it may or may not be zero but we, we certainly have no argument uh, to set it to zero at this stage now in cuet flow it does turn out to be zero but in this case it will not but you you don't know we don't know if it's zero or not and in this case it turns out not to be zero you have to retain that term so you're left with just the pressure gradient term and this di squared u by di y squared and you you can simplify this now just the, just using the terms that are not zero you get mu so the dynamic viscosity times d squared u by dy squared equals dp dx note that i've replaced the partial derivative with a full derivative because u is only a function of y u does not change in the x direction and it does not change in the z direction so we can have a full derivative there and i already discussed that pressure is only a function of x now so we can replace that with a full derivative now in previous videos we talked about this in some detail so I'm going to cover this again relatively quickly you have two functions here you have a function of u and a function of p u is a function of y p is a function of x the only way you can have two independent functions equal to one another over the complete domain and these are independent functions is if they equal a constant this is a mathematical argument you can also make a physical argument that dp dx the pressure gradient along the uh, well in the channel uh, is a constant because the velocity gradient at the wall is a constant and it's that mu du dy that uh, the viscous shear stress at the wall that produces the pressure gradient and it's constant everywhere so it'll produce a constant uh, dp dx that's a physical argument if you prefer uh, that over a mathematical argument 
So on the next slide, I've just rearranged this equation slightly. We have, I've brought mu over to this side. So we have di squared u by di y squared equals 1 upon mu dp dx. And now we can integrate this. We can separate variables and integrate it. If we integrate once, we get uh, du dy equals 1 upon mu dp dx and then y plus some unknown constant. And we can integrate this again. And this is going to become y squared upon 2. So you get 1 upon 2 mu dp dx y squared. This is going to become c1y and we get another constant c2. I'm going to call this equation star. And we're going to solve for the two uh, unknown constants c1 and c2 using the boundary conditions. And we have the upper and lower uh, no slip conditions that are the boundary conditions on velocity that provide the information to get c1 and c2. So I'm going to start by using the, the lower boundary condition here that because we have no slip, u at the at y equals 0, so y equals 0 here, has to equal this big U. So what we do is we take equation star, let's write equation star, and we put in here y equals 0 and u equals big U. So everywhere we see y, we put in y equals 0. And for here, we put uh, uppercase U, that lower boundary condition. And you can see from this, you're going to get C2 equals U, because these terms are going to go away. And so now we've got C2. So we can substitute in here for C2, U. And that's what I've written on the next page. So you'll see equation star with C2 rewritten with the capital U. OK, so here we have equation star written with C2 replaced by that upper uh, case uh, U, the velocity of the lower plate. So now we have one unknown constant that still remains to be found. And we use the boundary condition here at the upper plate to do so. So we use the upper boundary condition on velocity to get C1. And that's uh, obtained by knowing that at y equals b, so at the upper plate, the velocity is equal to 0. So we set uh, u equals 0 at y equals b. So here's equation star written. And what we do is we substitute in u equals 0 uh, here. And everywhere we see y, we put in b. So that becomes b squared, and that becomes b. And now we can solve. Uh, for C2. So making that substitution, we get 0 equals 1 upon 2 mu dp dx b squared plus C1b plus u, which is our uh, value for C2. And now we can solve for C1. And you can check my algebra here. Uh, C1 equals uh, minus b upon 2 mu dp dx. That's correct. And that's going to become capital U upon b. So I believe that's correct. So now we've got C1 and C2. I think on the next slide I've just rewritten C1. Yes, I have. And there's equation star where we were at, right? And we were after this. Now we have this value for C1. So we can make that substitution for C1, and we're essentially done. That's the next step, is I've just substituted in here. So this is going to become 1 upon 2 mu dp dx y squared. This is going to become minus b 1 upon 2 mu dp dx times y minus u upon b times y plus mu. Now really, that's if you ended there, that would be fine. That's really the answer. Uh, if you want to, you can collect some terms. And that's what I've done next to make it look a little nicer. You can collect terms. Uh, and simplify a little bit, and you get this nice little form. So you get sort of the, the parabolic velocity distribution caused by quasi flow superimposed upon this linear velocity distribution that's caused by the wall movement, which is coet flow. And that's the answer. I hope you found uh, that review example helpful.